Great. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Jessica O'Donnell, Head of Education at the Hugh Lane Gallery, and we're delighted to welcome you to the Hugh Lane Gallery and to extend a very warm welcome to artist Ivan Argot, whose talk here today is presented in collaboration with Sculpture Dublin. And we'd also like to extend a very warm welcome to Karen Downey, Programme Director of Sculpture Dublin, and also representatives of the Colombian Embassy as well. So thank you for being with us um, here today. Um, Ivan Argot is a Colombian artist and film director based in Paris. Through his sculptures, installations, films and interventions, he seeks to question our relations with others, with power structures and belief systems. He develops strategies based on tenderness, affection and humour, generating critical approaches to dominant historical narratives. In his interventions on monuments, large-scale, ephemeral and permanent public artworks, Ivan proposes new symbolic and political use of public spaces. Ivan Argot was recently awarded the Sculpture Dublin and Dublin City Council's Commission for St Anne's Park, and the selection uh, committee included Barbara Dawson, director of the Hugh Lane Gallery, and Rory O'Keeve, who's with us as well here today. The creation of a new permanent land artwork is the central focus of the commission, and Ivan has proposed a large-scale earthwork for the site at the southeastern corner of the park uh, that overlooks the Dublin Bay uh, biosphere and is an area recognised for its diversity of bird and plant life. The proposed artwork will play with perspectives on the surrounding area and is inspired by ancient monuments, architecture and the park's historic follies. Ivan's talk today explores alternative narratives in public space, and I invite you to join me in welcoming Ivan here today. Thank you. So much. Thank you, thank you. Um, happily, we have this mic. I, I lost a little bit my voice. I did two presentations yesterday. I'm very into presentations now. So I'm very glad to be here. Thanks for having me. I'm very happy to share it. Today, also, the project we've been developing for uh, almost about a year, I think. I started thinking about this about a year ago. Um, I remember I sent the proposal. I was in Mexico, uh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, thinking about talking a lot with people. Um, <clears throat> and I'm happy to be here. So I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to try, I used to talk sometimes too much. So I'll try to restrain myself. Um, I'm going to, of course, um, I'm going to make a little presentation of my work and I kind of on um, some visions and projects I have related to public space. And then I will present some images and nice renderings of, <laughs> of um, Elevation, which is the project um, uh, that we're going to do at St. Anne's Park. So I named the, the presentation Alternative Narratives in Public Space because it's something that it's been kind of present in my work since day one. Um, <clears throat> I moved to Paris when I was 23 uh, from Colombia. That was my very first trip uh, outside the country. And uh, it was for me, I was um, a bit like an alien, like, like totally like an alien. I didn't speak any French. I didn't know any people. Um, it was completely a new context to me. And then I kind of used that, uh, um, that, that situation to kind of relearn the way kind of to behave or not behave, and also the way to um, kind of confront, like I, I realized we have so much, we establish so much like uh, barriers and walls in between each other, and then there is some codes that, um, yeah, kind of this relation with other kind of seems to me kind of emerged while I was living those first years. So I'm gonna show some videos of the, those days. Um, I hope this the sound is connected to the to the HDMI. Wait, I'm gonna just check. Let's see. It's not. So is there a? Uh, I can play it. Oh yeah. Can you raise it a little bit? It's very important. Hey. Action! Très bien. Continuez comme ça. Très, très bien. Continuez. 
Continuez comme ça, s'il vous plaît. Continuez comme ça, voilà. Génial. Voilà. Et... Attendez, attendez, et... Excuse me. I was um, back in Colombia. I was uh, f um, assistant director of um, in a film production company. So that was kind of my job to yell out loud action and keep doing it. Okay, smile, smile a bit more, and then um, and then I was this. I create this fiction out of this banal um, subway kind of stop. This is another video from this series. We can raise a little bit the volume. I think. <coughs> bonjour, euh, mesdames et messieurs, bonjour. En fait, euh, euh, aujourd'hui, c'est mon anniversaire. Je euh, suis tout nouveau à Paris, donc je n'ai pas beaucoup d'amis. J'aimerais que, que vous chantez pour moi le joyeux anniversaire pour garder un bon, un bon souvenir. Est-ce que c'est possible Non. Oui, ah, s'il vous plaît, s'il vous plaît. Alors, ah, je vais juste enregistrer. Un, 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 deux, un, deux. Vos prénoms. Allez, Ivan. Ok. Alors, un, deux, trois. Joyeux anniversaire, Ivan. Joyeux anniversaire, Ivan. Joyeux anniversaire, Ivan. Joyeux anniversaire. Bravo, merci. Merci beaucoup. Voilà. This is in a uh, subway elevator in uh, Abbas station. It's, um, they have this huge, huge elevator with like holds, I don't know, 50 people. And I was often in that because I, I used to live in that area. And then I was always, you know, in these places where you try not to see each other, not to cross uh, looks and to avoid kind of contact. And I was like trying to, I was thinking for many months, like how could, make kind of a common situation, a kind of a communion in between all these people for just a minute and then generate kind of a small community. So I came up with uh, the idea of celebrating my birthday there. But unfortunately, my birthday is on November and, <laughs> and then it's very cold and people are very sad in Paris in November. So I wait, I waited until March. It was a very sunny day like this day. And then I, was, I saw the sun and I was, this is the moment, so I went and it was not my birthday, but almost. <laughs> um, so, no, this is another, uh, maybe, I don't know if I want to show this. Um, this, is, this is an intervention I did. Well, there is a big part of my work uh, that is <clears throat> related also to monuments. Um, this is a small intervention I did in, in Bogota. Funny enough, it was 2009, I was living, I had this funny t-shirt. I was living in, already in Paris and I was invited as a foreign artist to my country. Um, and then I, uh, I wanted to make a collage. Um, so I found this lost statue of Simon Bolivar, which is a huge hero because he uh, liberates um, five countries from Spain. From, he was the leader of the liberation from Spain. And I wanted to make a collage. <clears throat> also, Simon Bolivar is some, a figure that is being used by different um, political wings, let's say, and uh, either left or right. Um, so everybody like claims to be successors of him. So I just um, I wanted to make this collage and then mix a statue and the fountain, so to have like a sinking statue. And uh, so I just, it's just a small action I did, uh, um, always with no permission. <laughs> um, I didn't expect it floated, so, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, it was empty inside. Um, but the funny thing is like, uh, they never removed it once I stole it because they believed it was like that. Um, it was, that's something kind of very special and, and kind of also made me uh, generate a lot of questions uh, because one, it was one of the first actions I did with like a statue or, um, is this kind of we forgive sometimes they're there no so we don't we stop seeing them and then 
And actually, it remained there until, because it was plaster, it solved into the water. So, and people was crossing there and it was like, oh, I never realized it was a statue in the middle. And then keep their, their way. So that's a small intervention. Ah, okay, that's a bit more like a... Um, so this series of years, I have plenty. I have others where, like, for example, I tried to give some money in the subway, kind of reverse the situation. There is a one, another very funny when I uh, go into a bus, into a public bus, and with a camera, and I start presenting the people as if they're my family. So like the driver, I say like, this is my cousin driver, who is my cousin Richard, who's driving, and then he's like, what? Then I talk to other guy, and he's like, fuck you, don't feel me. I, my aunt, my uncle is very grumpy, so, and then I. Mm. And then <clears throat> I was always these questions about the context and how we interact with each other and how we could create a new familiarity with others. Um, but then I also was also an art student and I was confronted to um, art history. I mean, I studied art history also in Colombia. Um, but I was kind of, for the first time, seeing masterpieces of kind of the history of art uh, on life, not in photocopy. Um, and then I had many questions, like, why did I, why did I learn this history? Uh, what is my relationship with a museum? What is my relationship with, this, with the art? So th the next images we'll see are shocking, so be ready. Um, I made this intervention, which is called Retouch. It's just 12 seconds video. That's Centre Pompidou. So b believe me, they like me, they invite me yesterday to show a film. <laughs> And um, so this video, I, it's, uh, I, I did it for the open studios at Fine Art School when I was studying. And um, it, it was kind of, and the, and the video actually, what I did, I'm gonna show it again. Uh, I went to the museum, I went with the spray can, but I actually, I didn't paint. I, I told you I work in the film industry before. So I did the graffiti on post-production. And I just put the video alone in the studio and I left to have a beer with my friends. Then I came back and then the whole institution was kind of shocked. The director of the school was there and then they were like, ah, you can't do that here. It's a, <laughs> like as if I was super wild. Um, and then, so I let them talk, I let them talk and then I, I told them like, you see the video is called Retouch. It's written like digitality, retouching a little cartel. Um, and then it was either about the questions. There's another video actually, I don't have it here, but uh, on other interventions I did in the museum. For example, I went to dance with, in front of a Malevich painting with a radio. I just tried to play a song in a radio and then I danced because I wanted to dance with him. Um, so, and this video kind of circulated a lot at the time. That was 2008. Uh, and also in YouTube, it's kind of a piece I did also for YouTube, which was new at the time. Um, I got many threats, insults, but that was kind of funny also on how we believe in images and what uh, people have, relation have with art and vandalism and uh, this is me. And then, um, I'm gonna try to go faster, wait, yes, no, I'm fine. Um, La Estrategia, I'm kind of very fast. Um, La Estrategia is a big project. Uh, I did, let's say, many of these short videos, uh, interventions, and I, at the time, I started doing like more in, in situ, uh, like site-specific interventions, not much sculptures. Uh, I didn't have kind of the, my, my media was mainly in, in photo and video. And then with La Estrategia, it was a very important project because it's based on some stories of my fathers who were uh, their militants in Colombia. And they were part of, uh, they were unionists, but back in the 70s, uh, there was this thing in Colombia named Estatuto de Seguridad, which was um, a, a kind of a law or you know, like a status that gave the army the right to judge people immediately. So they use it to uh, disappear opposants, to uh, threat people. So at my, at my home, we had many, many threats just because my parents were unionists. So also they kind of, in, in the middle of that ambience, they, uh, they joined like in an urban kind of, uh, a urban, how do you say that? Um, um, uh, they were like, uh, what do you call, uh, they sympathized with a, with a guerrilla at the time. So they were more like students who were like, were living in communities and kind of more ideologized than, they were not like part of military actions or anything, but they were more just like doing activism and, 
and in the universities, of course, like strikes and protests and other many, many other actions. So La Estrategia recovers those histories. Uh, actually, there's no archives from that because they couldn't take a picture of themselves. It was dangerous. Sometimes they don't even know each other because in between groups it was important not to recognize each other because in case the army took you, you cannot recognize the others. They used to torture a lot of people. Um, so in this film, it's a very complex film. It's like a, that was the film I was showing yesterday at the, at the Pompidou because it's part of the collection and also I show it kind of a little retrospective. But this film is important because I use the strategies I was using with these videos, interventions, and, and I create a more like a kind of half documentary, half fiction film. Um, this is some expert excerpts. That's, um, that statue is, uh, this guy is uh, a statue is in Parque Nacional in Bogota. Uh, this guy, uh, his name is Francisco de Orellana. He's a conquistador that is not very well known. I don't think uh, you know him. Uh, so this statue is in, in a central park, let's say, the central park of Bogota. And uh, he's the guy who supposedly discovered the Amazonian rainforest just by himself. Uh, he just got there and then he's like, ah, I discovered this. And then it was people already living there and then there's many communities. Uh, and then in Bogota, there's only these monuments related to the Amazonian, like, to the Amazonian rainforest. Um, and, uh, I feel, and it's one of these monuments that people don't see anymore. This, this is like a roundabout, which is more popular because they make great juice all around. They make like fruit juice of orange and like exotic fruits. And then sometimes you go past there and then oh, I'm gonna take a little juice. But nobody knows who is this guy. But still in the school books and the like history books, he's still the guy who discovered the Amazonian, and there is no kind of recognition of all the people who are living in there or who live there. So I, uh, I got this uh, letter from the city hall that allowed me to make a film, in, to film in parks. So I had just this letter, Mr. Ivan Argote is allowed to film in parks. And I used this as a, uh, so I used this to make these interventions in public space. There was, more than 10 years ago. So the, the, the topic was not that as hot as it is today. Um, and then what I did was covering him with mirrors, with this idea of why are we still focusing or like putting up there these kind of icons instead of kind of seeing around and then taking care of ourselves instead of admiring this these icons. Uh, so it's this idea of having mirar. the reflection, like showing all around everything else that is not him. Um, and then the, the beautiful thing is also the end, nature end up eating kind of the image and making disappear the... So as these actions, I, this is another thing, this is someone sleeping. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna try to see, wait. Yeah, those, I, they, I, the film has like some parts which are more like um, comments and uh, like live life situations and also this other intervention. So this is a monument also in Bogota named, um, uh, it, it used to be named El Monumento a los Reyes Católicos, the monument to the Sp Sp Spanish, no, to the Catholic kings. And it's Isabel the Catholic uh, and Christopher Columbus um, on the front. It's actually the first, it was the first monument that you see when you arrive to the airport, from the airport, is the welcoming, which I also I think is very strange. Um, it's also the way it's installed, it's kind of a bit mediocre because uh, the statues were supposed to be in some other neighborhood and then be moving, actually they were supposed to be installed for the 400 years of, um, of the discovery of uh, uh, yeah of America with discovery and then they couldn't install them because they didn't have mo enough money so they decided to sell them 30 years after to celebrate the foundation of the city of Bogota uh, and then they moved from different neighborhoods and then the guy was supposed to point the west but now he's pointing the south and then doesn't make any more sense. And, and I, I, it was one of the first uh, interventions I did with these ponchos. I started in Madrid also, 
pretty much at the same time. Um, and I was trying Spanish to generate a more mestizo Spanish. monument. Let's, let's say, okay, we're, no we have this Spanish. mixed culture and I cannot deny the kind of tradition we have from them, but also we cannot deny other uh, traditions we have from others. So I wanted to generate a kind of either I mean, uh, a little bit mock these images and kind of try to say we can transform them and then transvestite them. Uh, and then, so yeah, I did uh, in poncho interventions um, on Isabel and then on Christopher. <laughs> and funny thing, well, funny thing, no, last year there was a lot of um, uh, protest in Colombia for um, for a uh, tax law and then for many other things. Uh, uh, and then the uh, Misak community, which is an indigenous indigenous community, was kind of involved into kind of. Uh, taking down colonial statues, and the city of Bogota decided to remove the statues to avoid them to get uh, yeah, destroyed. So now they're not anymore there. Um, and actually, I'm going to do a project next year about that. I'm not going to place anything uh, to replace them, but I'm going to generate in not only in this place, but also in other places, such as the other park. and. I'm gonna generate uh, kind of a garden. A garden is I'm gonna curate kind of um, uh, a garden that has like special meanings, yes, and the choice of plants are like special. Yes, and they're like the politically, lab. historically. Yeah. Um, so this is the series of turistas. This is in Madrid. Uh, that's the ones in Colombia. That's the, that's in Los Angeles. Uh, this is a funny story, but. Um, <laughs> mm. I'm going to tell you really quick. Uh, so I went to make this intervention. Just, I just one of the few times I filmed myself, um, uh, and uh, I was in the pueblo de Los Angeles, downtown LA. Um, that's 2013, early 2013, and uh, I got stopped by a security guard. And the guy he was he was Mexican. And I was like, "Come on, dude, let me do it." And he was like, "No, I cannot. I'm going to get fired if you do that." So he was like, you know what, I'm going to make you a favor. Uh, if you come tomorrow at 7, I'm, I'm going to bring you to my boss, and then you can ask him. And then if my boss says, OK, you can do it. So I arrived at 6 AM because I knew it was not him and not his boss there. <laughs> and then I did the intervention. And then when the guy arrived at 7, I was already done. And I was like, thank you so much. I already did it. And he was like, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's, um, it, I mean, it's, it just, this happens. <laughs> Sometimes I let them, sometimes I'm not. Um, um, uh, yeah, that's the, actually the pictures of the intervention I showed before. Uh, that's way more recent uh, work. Um, uh, yeah, that's uh, an exhibition I did recently in New York, and then also thinking about what could, could, how could we use this kind of statues that are now like in cemeteries or waiting to be somewhere. Oh, these colonial statues that have been like moving, and so I. This is a simple proposal to use them as planters, um, so you can have like beautiful nature and <laughs> wild nature. My my idea is always to work with uh, plants that are growing up kind of in the same area where they're installed. Um, this is actually um, George Washington, a, a replica of George Washington. <laughs> Um, and now it's beautiful because now it's kind of traveling in different places. It's being shown in different corners, so the bodies are like all spread. And then I like this idea of this more kind of horizontal in a way. Um, um, yeah, I'm gonna pass by this. This is a recent show also in San Antonio <laughs> about also a monument of Christopher Columbus that was removed by the Italian community in the U.S. who are very attached to the image of Christopher Columbus. And then I proposed to make this staircase. Uh, to allow the people to be the monument for a little bit. <laughs> and, and then the city accepted, but then they refused because they were afraid of the polemic. Um, so I finally installed it in the exhibition space, and uh, I installed a picture where you can like, place yourself uh, as a monument. And we did a barbecue, we did a workshop with kids. They may generate their own kind of monument proposals, which are very cute. I don't know if you can see them there, but... Uh, like uh, this ovni, I like it a lot. Um, I'm, yeah, um, I'm gonna pass a little bit about that. 
this is a lot of the, in the past two years I've been working a lot about um, the, uh, the these monuments. It's not it's, not, uh, it's a big part of my work, uh, but uh, there is another branches which are more close to the <laughs> to the project I'm doing here. Um, this is um, I I don't know if there is a video of this. No, no. Uh, I actually made a replica of the of the statue of Christopher Columbus in in Madrid, and then I made this video where the the statue is moving on a truck. Uh, so and it's a huge statue of like five six meters long. So my idea was to generate this fiction of the statue is it's going somewhere. And then to generate this kind of click on people like, I don't know, how taking their take, well, they're taking their lunch break, going out of from their office and see this huge statue moving on, going, on, going away from Madrid. So it's to generate this kind of, um, and it worked actually very well. I mean, it was interesting because the truck, it was moving. It was more like a, a sculpture moving around the city. Um, and also El País was involved, uh, the newspaper, so they wrote a very nice article because they were more like kind of taking the comments of the people. And, um, and that's a show I made in Madrid that it was called Aliens in Madrid. And but a funny thing, I'm maybe going to end about this part on this. Um, the day Christopher Columbus arrived in America is the 12th of October, which is called Columbus Day in some places. Um, in the South America, it's called Dia de la Raza, the Day of Race, which is a very strange name. And I found out this name comes from, at the beginning, uh, and also, no, the strange thing is, in Spain, that's the national holiday. It's the most important day where they do the army uh, thing, and then the defile, I don't know how to say, and then you put the, all the trucks and cars and militaries uh, marching. So it's the most, kind of the pride day of the nation. Um, and when I found that, it was kind of weird for me. It was like, oh, how come they celebrate this 1492? 12th of October, 1492 is their major holiday. Most of our countries are like liberations or new constitutions or, uh, um, I mean, they have many, many things to celebrate in Spain, I think. Uh, and I found that it was weird. So I created this comic book that is called Aliens in Madrid, where uh, uh, an alien energy arrived on 12th of October, precisely to Madrid. Um, but it's an energy full of empathy and um, tenderness and self-criticism. So everybody become like super self-critic and at the same time super lovely. So it's like maybe yeah we can ask ourselves about these colonial celebrations and then everybody <laughs> start transforming the end of the reality in, in a very funny way. This is some images of the show. And then well these another kind of works are. Um, Sometimes, so I generate um, interventions about things that exist, but sometimes I've been asked why I propose uh, things for places that are not related to what exists, but it's more like I also propose sometimes uh, things, not only interventions. So this is a very important project I did in Cameroon, in Douala. Um, it was maybe my first uh, yeah, permanent commission. Uh, so I visit Douala. Um, and then uh, the context, it was, uh, I didn't expect it. I grew up in a popular neighborhood in Colombia and I travel a lot and I know very different places in Colombia and I thought it, was, it would be a little bit similar, but it was not. Um, because the colonization in those countries were completely different as what happened in Colombia, for example, where infrastructures were built. In Cameroon, uh, for example, the major uh, economy until the mid 19th century was slavery. And then actually uh, the whole slavery trade was happening in the sea. So nobody built any infrastructure. So they just bought the people uh, on the water. Um, so some, uh, for example, in Cameroon, some tribes kidnap other tribes and sell them to the different, either Portuguese mainly in that area. Uh, and then, so the first, for example, uh, let's say owner of Cameroon was uh, Germany, but they never, they never built anything. They just, and then when the slavery trade ended, they were like, okay, maybe you have to do something. They were, they're super afraid also in the rights, in the historical kind of, um, uh, yeah, text. They, they were super afraid to touch, to enter into the land. Uh, so they start building, but they build a very precarious infrastructure until today. Uh, Cameroon also, uh, it called, it's called Cameroon because uh, when the Portuguese arrived by the area and then make the first maps, 
they found this huge river, it's called Wuri. It's, a enormous, it's enormous delta, Douala. Uh, it's beautiful because it has this, this volcano in Mont, Mont Cameroon uh, that ends up in the sea and then you have the delta. And in this delta, they found a lot of shrimps. So they call it Rio dos Camarões, which means shrimps river. Um, and then uh, the Germans, when they got this land, they were like, okay, let's, let's make a smaller word. So they just made up Cameroon because it sounds like Camarões, but Cameroon doesn't mean anything in German. Um, and it was named like that until the end of the First World War. So as when Germany after the war had a big kind of debt towards France, and then they decided to pay part of the debt with Cameroon, like take this country. And then, so the French, like Frenchized the name Cameroon. Um, and then you know it's called Cameroon. Um, funny enough, fun. I don't know if it's funny. Uh, in Portuguese, it's still called uh, camarões, shrimps. Um, so I was invited there to make an intervention and a sculpture, a permanent sculpture, and I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't think of anything kind of going up. Uh, there's no also a notion of kind of public space or squares or uh, streets. It's, it's a completely different thing. So I decided to. Uh, I found there was a lot of. Uh, this is the sewers all around the city. It's just these canals that, uh, like, were canalized the, you know, say, until the filthy water. Um, but uh, I found there were many, many places where these concrete slabs were missing. Normally, they place these kind of um, normal concrete slabs. But so I decided to make an intervention on those places and kind of write poems on it. So I make these kind of pinkish uh, concrete slabs. Um, and I make these poems that it's called We Mavi, but they talk about kind of tenderly, and then they start more and more talking about politics. Also, politics in Cameroon are it's very difficult. Uh, Cameroon has been an independent country. They were independent in '61 um, because France decided to, and then they placed this guy, a military guy, who last uh, stayed for 30 years, and he was replaced by uh, his right hand who has been in power for more than 35 years, um, Paul Bia. And then it's very repressive. You cannot do much things. When you are not black also, you're very, very, very visible. Um, I thought I was not white, but they call me white there. <laughs> uh, it was a bit shocking for me too. Um, but it was, it was funny, I mean, we had fun with that. And then I also I installed in front of schools. We, so we did uh, different... Um, we implant these slabs in different neighborhoods where like sometimes they ask us and then I was um, in Cameroon doing myself the concrete with some um, some people and then this system of writing uh, and I reproduce it also here this is an intervention in the desert of Coachella in, in California uh, the, uh, see, we couldn't last let it for lo longer because of uh, uh, liability and, and many things. Um, the L word, what they call it. Um, uh, but then, so its platform is called a point of view. And uh, we wanted to generate, to bring people in the area. It was a name, it's part of a biennial, it's called Desert Biennial. And we wanted to bring people uh, down there because it's kind of very south in the valley. The most well known city in the valley is Palm Spring. Um, but it, this is kind of an hour, a bit more than away from Palm Spring, um, kind of 90 miles away. Uh, and uh, and this, this lake, Salton Sea, is the biggest lake. Uh, ah, I also have these poems that were written. So the idea was like you can read while we're climbing and then have this perspective on the, on the landscape. And the point it was also to kind of raise attention on the lake because the lake has a major kind of catastrophe, ecological catastrophe, because all the water that is supposed to come has been taken by date plantations and golf uh, fields. Um, so the, sh the, la the lake is literally shrinking, and uh, now it's all toxic. And so all the animals around are dead, so there is a ring around the lake of a huge ring of just death uh, fishes and stinks, and um, it's very sad. It's very beautiful, but it's very sad. As there's, this is a small, also, this is more like a sculpture, I would say. It's a small, uh, those are more like bridges, also three little poems that you can cross. And um, 
I like this idea of a bridge as a place, as a, as a place and as something that connects two places that are not easy to connect or not like in touch. Um, I think it's also very romantic. <laughs> um, you can run also. Uh, and, then, and then we are here. Uh, <laughs> ra, ra, ra. Um, so, um, this, uh, like, there's many things I've said before that are kind of wings to the things I'm going to say now. Uh, there is this idea of horizontality that is important to me uh, when talking about, like, public, let's say, sculpture. Um, there is also an important thing about experience, the, to generate infrastructures that you can experience and you can, um, you can uh, to kind of allow you to have a new sensation, a new appreciation of the place, or also kind of get you a little bit away from your um, position and then place you in another place in another moment. Um, and uh, so that's the, I'm, I'm shy. <laughs> um, so this is, I'm going to show some renders uh, that are very fresh, uh, uh, that were done by the engineer's uh, office we're working with. Um, and uh, I'm very shy. <laughs> I know this is, I know this is just, ah, I was thinking, this is just images from the park. Yeah, kind of the inspiration. You, you, you know better the park than me. Um, I was very inspired also by the folies in the park and this idea of fantasy or um, by the archaeological sites here in Ireland and not only in Ireland but also like in South America. This is a folie also, which I think is very funny. Um, and then, ah, this is the elevation. <laughs> so what I'm, I want to propose, uh, well, uh, the proposal is basically um, I found in the Cahier de Charge, I don't know how you say that, in the... Um, in the, in the PDF of uh, when they proposed the project, uh, well, like the whole information, um, there were two facts. Actually, it was not even in the in the book, but in the in the there were two facts I found out were interesting to me. The just the inclination, the subtile inclination of the field, um, seven degrees, uh, it's a beautiful number. <laughs> uh, and then I I dreamed of this. Uh, of this idea of uh, generating a path that in this field that is a bit tilt, uh, as generate a straight line that actually gets you up without going up, that brings you up just being leveled. Um, it's very subtle, uh, very kind of, and it gets, it could be very big and very kind of um, massive and uh, ambitious, but it's also a very simple gesture to just, just Kind of, I have the, well, the dream of kind of flying or starting flying or something like that, well, like a bird takes flight or something like that. Um, so that was the, um, the main idea was to use, there was another fact that was important to me that was, uh, there was a lot of um, earth uh, kind of disposable, uh, a number of met cube meters of, of earth. And then, since it's also very flat, I say to myself, look, okay, we, we can generate a volume with that land. And then, kind of the, the mixing between both generate this proposal. Um, so, it's funny because also I saw these renders uh, today. <laughs> so, I'm discovering, we're discussing, still discussing things about lighting, about hand railing and things like that. Uh, um, I, I personally would like, it looks pretty much more like a sculpture than like a infrastructure. Um, more like an uh, something you can discern or not if it's uh, like an ancient site or not, uh, or like a modern kind of brutalized architecture. So I think uh, it's a lot of details we're working on and that, and I think the texture, I mean, it's a, it's a process uh, we are in the middle of. Also, I think it's important to me to kind of work with local materials and not bring the stones from I don't know where. And then that was part of the project to use the things that were already there, no? Um, I even go to visit some stones that are already in the park and I don't know if we could integrate it or not. This uh, gray granite that, you know, it's present everywhere here. This is a very nice cart that's crossing the <laughs> and this friend of mine. Uh, 
So, and then the idea is like, it's pointing, ah, look, it's beautiful. It's pointing the, what's the name? The lighthouse, right? Uh, uh, I, I forget, sometimes I forget the name in English. So, yeah, the idea is to kind of have this point in the perspective uh, that kind of makes you a guide and then maybe attracts you. And then at the end of the path, you get an elevation about three meters high. And we try it in the parking. It's kind of, uh, this is, those are my drawings. Um, I use them in, I put them in pink because <laughs> I made this pink uh, concrete all the time. Uh, but I'm still, as I, as I told you, I'm still like, uh, we are still thinking about what is going to, how it's going to look and what's the material and the texture also. There is some ideas I have, for the, I have also for the casting. I used to work with a special kind of texture for the casting. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, no, yeah, so that's it. It's a very, I like it um, also when, I applied, I, uh, I wanted to, to generate a truth land art piece and not like a um, sculpture that could be placed here or there or uh, mm, uh, so, but uh, something that is kind of makes sense in the landscape. I mean, it, it, it talks with the landscape and it generates also a new landscape and new perspective. So yeah, that's the proposal of elevation, to have this elevation would not Without, without doing it. <laughs> and I think that's it. Tak. <laughs> I'm surprised I did 40 minutes. Sometimes I get like an hour and a half and I told no, that. thank you. And um, thank you to Jessica and Captain who are here for uh, organizing it. And welcome again to Karen and to Rory from, and to Paula from uh, Sculpture Dublin. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that talk. I think Les Moore, who is the park superintendent, would be very relieved that his statues and monuments might be safe on this occasion. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not yeah. touching them. I mean, you know, I'm otherwise, you know, the there might be, we might find um, a sort of a, a kilt on one or maybe no. an Aaron sweater on another. Uh, so well, it might be a good idea as well. Um, it was a lovely presentation, and it's very, it's very, it's not rare, but it's, it's great when you see great art that has humor in it as well as a very serious content. And I think that's one of the, um, uh, uh, you know, kernels of, of, the, of uh, Ivan's art that I find uh, very strong. And I think his work in St. Anne's Park would be something that people will enjoy for a very, very long time. I mean, I know it's still in its um, yeah, yeah. infancy, but uh, the combination of those two things, the thoughtfulness of the work, uh, the consideration of the site, and the fact that it is a land art piece that can't be kind of, as you say, moved around. And I'm sure there'll be some sort of twinkling humor in it in some part, in somewhere. Um, I, would you like to have, ask Ivan um, any questions? <laughs>